world's funniest commercials tonight at 10.35. Right now on BBC One, strong language and a new series. And they think it's all over. A magnificent setting, two great teams. What drama here. And Seaman, what a magnificent save. Not good. Tuffler's got him. Some people are on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Hello and welcome to a new series of They Think It's All Over. On David's team is a French rugby star whose team were knocked out in the semi-finals of the World Cup. Although, as French President Jacques Chirac pointed out, England's win was actually a victory for Europe. So would you please welcome Rugby World Cup winner Thomas Castillier. <laughs> With Phil and Jonathan is a legendary featherweight who we're particularly honoured to have at this time of year as he's unique in the world of boxing. He's not in panto. <laughs> it's Barry McGuigan. <laughs> we start the show with a handbags question. David, Rory and Thomas, take a look at this. Now, just in case you've been living in a spider hole for eight months, here's England on their way to a heart-stopping victory in the recent Rugby Union World Cup. But after the game, rather than criticise their own team, the Aussie fans turned on their Prime Minister, John Howard. So what had the Prime Minister done to upset them, <coughs> David's team? It's great to have uh, Thomas de Castagnier with us. What's it like to be dumped humiliatingly out of a World Cup? <laughs> yeah, not you, David, not you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fantastic final, which you didn't see because you're on a plane going home, but... Um... <laughs> No, it was quite hard to see the final as a Frenchman, and especially the, watching the game was was hard, but watching the celebration was harder, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you play for the Saracens, don't you? Yeah, the I Saracens. play for Saracens. Yeah, we, we got the same trouble as Manchester City. We got good players, we, we, don't, manage, we don't manage to have really good results. Right. Is that, well, yeah. you don't have shit goalkeepers in rugby, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no. So, the Australian Prime Minister, John Howard, I believe mm. we were talking about. It was something he said when he was giving out the medals. When he was giving out the medals to the English, he said things like, shove that up your ass, you pommy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's, yeah, that's not far off the answer, actually. actually. Yeah, it's and, to and do with the way he put him on, because he was more or less, he might as well just thrown him on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll give you three points for that. Well done, indeed. <laughs> In fact, it was John Howard's bad manners when he handed over the cup and medals that angered the Australian public. One newspaper described his behaviour as shameful and embarrassing, while another said he was like a discontented five-year-old at a birthday party. And if you think that's rude, take a look at his mate, rugby official Sid Miller, giving out the losers' medals. Although they eventually lost, we shouldn't forget that Australia almost snatched the game thanks to a near match-winning performance from Australia's Sports Personality of the Year, South African referee Andre Watson. <laughs> <laughs> On the day of the World Cup final, the whole nation joined in the celebrations. Phil Tufnell was in the pub from 7 o'clock in the morning. And imagine his delight when the landlord told him there was rugby on. <laughs> LAUGHTER Phil, Jonathan and Barry, it's a tennis tantrum for you. Watch this. This is Leighton Hewitt and Australia powering their way to victory over Spain in the recent Davis Cup final. But the match itself very nearly didn't take place when the Spanish team threatened to boycott the tie. So what happened that so upset the Spanish tennis team, Phil's team? Let me be the first to properly welcome Barry McGuigan, one of the finest boxers this country's ever produced. Former world champion Barry McGuigan to the show. Barry. Yeah. Yeah. And let's welcome Thomas to the show. Thomas, thank you for joining us. 
Thank you. So welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming here from France. This is, not this is a man who's learned his French from Allo Allo. <laughs> Qu'est-ce qu'on dit en français? Enculé? Enculé. I'm sorry, what is this language you're speaking? Well, you're not in Panto, are you? Yeah, I'm. Have you ever been in Panto? I regret to say I've done it once. No! No! Yes! When? I've done it with Frank Carson one time and I couldn't hear out of my right ear for six weeks after, so I've never done it again. Do you think it's wise letting Bruno go in a panto in his kind of delicate state of health? Let's be honest, he's a fellow who we hope gets better soon, but he's in a panto again this year, isn't he? And you think, here's a bloke who's been hearing voices. To stand in front of a crowd chatting, it's behind you, isn't the smartest thing. Did we have a question a while ago? I forgot. Uh, you did. It's why the Spanish, Spanish. tennis team uh, oh, yeah. nearly pulled out of the Davis Cup final. Was it something to do with siestas or something? Well, like what? Well, I don't know. <laughs> 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 You're taking a mile a mile. You're getting tough on us. <laughs> I think I know the answer. Do you? Oh, yeah, because I'm something of a tennis player. It was because um, the Australians played the wrong Spanish national anthem at the Davis Cup. Is the correct answer Instead Jonathan of... Ross? <laughs> In fact, it was a trumpet player that upset the Spanish team. Here's Australia's own hornblower, James Morrison, giving a stirring rendition of the Spanish national anthem. Unfortunately, it was the wrong national anthem. For some reason, the Aussies only had the music to the old Spanish Republican anthem, last heard in 1939, and the playing of which is a dire insult to the Spanish king. <laughs> You'd have thought the Spanish would be grateful for any trumpet playing just as long as it drowns out the singing coming from the Beckham's house. <laughs> it's rumoured that Pete Sampras plans to retire to Spain so he can be nearer to his family, a colony of whom live on the rock of Gibraltar. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Phil's team have three points. Round two is PhotoFit, where three sporting characters have been blended into one monstrosity. Uh, David's team, have a look at yours. Who's in there? <laughs> if you look on a different angle, the, the bottom looks like... Uh, no, it's the mouth. <laughs> Just don't even go there. <laughs> The mouse is, I think, is Johnny Wilkinson's face when he's just finishing kicking. Right, right. you're going for Johnny Wilkinson mm -hmm. with the mouth, OK. Do you know any sad goalkeepers with ridiculous hairdos, David? <laughs> 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 I know some big goalies with some ridiculous yeah, hairdos. It's David James. David James is in Right, really OK. Yeah. He's not as big as you, is he? He is. He's six foot. He's, he's, six. he's taller than you. Yeah. Is yeah. that how he got the England job? Over you? <laughs> or was there another reason? <laughs> <laughs> Eight, two inches means a lot. <laughs> oh, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's just the middle, which looks to me, I mean, there's Hernan Crespo, wasn't it? Yeah. So you think it's David James, Hernan Crespo and Johnny Wilkinson? You've got three points. Oh, well wow. done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look and see, shall we? Yeah. There it is, the bottle blue hair of England goalkeeper and shop steward David James, the crime-fighting mask of Chelsea goalbagger Hernan Crespo, and the concentrated I'm-about-to-take-a-kick mouth of Johnny Wilkinson. David James has taken over from David Seaman as the England goalkeeper. The good news is that David James is two inches taller. See? You won't get us like that again, Brazil. <laughs> It's believed that Johnny Wilkinson may try to patent his famous hands-together gesture, although he actually nicked it after he saw Wayne Rooney in a chip shop praying they hadn't run out of Savaloys. <laughs> <laughs> Phil's team, this one's for hey. you. <laughs> there we go. Hey! Okay, hey. who's in there? Now you've unveiled my new look early. <laughs> <laughs> looks like, looks like Lineker's let himself go a bit. It? <laughs> it's Gary's ears, isn't yeah. it? Is that Jerry Halliwell? before she's been to the waxers. <laughs> <laughs> I know the chin. Who's, who's, who's the chin? The chin is uh, definitely Howard Eastman, the middleweight champion of Europe, yeah. former world middleweight yeah, that's contender. Thought, yeah, that's <laughs> and I think I know the head too. Yeah, yeah same here. You yeah. go first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, what is the head? Who's, who, who do you The guess? head is, I think it's Paula Radcliffe. Yes, that's what I would say. Oh, yeah. And the eyes, you know the eyes? No one is running like that all the time. I'm going to Baldy. Uh, it's the only one I don't know as well. <laughs> Phil, it's up to you. Me and Barry have done the rest. The eyes. <laughs> the eyes. Um, he's got big, sheepy eyes. Yeah, they look, look a bit sad. They look a bit sad, don't they? Not Lineker. Not Lineker. No, I'll give you two points for that. Let's see how it works. It was the fly away hair, indeed, of marathon ace Paula Radcliffe. The I'm not going to Portugal eyes of luckless Welsh Supremo Mark Hughes and the time-consuming facial hair of middleweight boxing champion Howard Eastman. So you've got your two points. Paula Radcliffe recently lost her Sports Personality of the Year title to Johnny Wilkinson. She was just pipped to the post in the same way that Scotland's footballers were just pipped to the post by Holland. <laughs> David Beckham apparently tried to rig the vote in the Sports Personality of the Year, dialing the same number 65,000 times, which explains the surprise fourth place for the traffic cones hotline. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Phil's team have five points and David's team have six. <laughs> we press on with the treble where sports personalities are linked with objects. David's team, your subject for the treble is bizarre hobbies and your three are... Scarlet-faced hairdryer and footballing gentleman, Sir Alex Ferguson. Fumbling line-out totem, Ben Kay. And fast-living washed-up Mark Quick off his line, Bosnich. But which one collects samurai swords? Who has a passion for lawn maintenance? And which one collects... Kennedy assassination paraphernalia. David's team. How can you like it? How can you be obvious? It's not me that likes it, it's one of them three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you get confused, ask me, I will clarify for you. <laughs> Thank you, Sean, Jonathan. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> you be quiet, man. So, what was that? That was going to be Irish. Georgie. <laughs> Georgie. I told you Irish. That's half Irish. Oh, shut up now, you little ten year <laughs> I'll take you back out and give you a beating with my boot. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's like I come from the middle of Ireland, isn't it? Uh, no. Bosnich. Bosnich. He's got to be the lawnmower man. Why? Because he loves lines. <laughs> <laughs> but he was thinking that one up as the ball went whizzing past him. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about Ben Kate? What about him? You know, he'll always be remembered for dropping that ball, won't he? Before you stop, before you even <laughs> go on. It is sad when a top sportsman is remembered for one stupid fumble in a very important game. Yeah, it's much better <laughs> to be remembered for several, eh, David? <laughs> so you like mowing the lawn, don't you? You're always backing up the grass at the weekends, I hear. <laughs> 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 oh, Give me a minute. But Ferguson <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't cut his own grass, would he? He'd put Rude Van Nistelrooy out to graze for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> Bozzy will be his... Um, the samurai sword collector. Thomas, have you played against um, Ben K? Uh, Sorry, have you played against <laughs> Ben K? <laughs> now you're taking the piss <laughs> now, and I think that's what. <laughs> I apologise on behalf of my colleagues. <laughs> uh, ben K, big, big boy, isn't yeah, he? Big how, boy. how tall is he? About six foot. Yeah, four, six, four, four, uh, six foot. Six. I don't know. It is two meters, I think. But I don't know what it what? is. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly Aliens the language breaks language down there. <laughs> It's not a clue, mate. What is it again? De Metre. De Metre. He has three hearts. <laughs> <laughs> They're huge while we play. Martin Johnson, mm. he's, what is he, 20 stone, is that right? Seven foot tall? Imagine his poor mother squeezing that one out. <laughs> I bet he was walking before she was. <laughs> do we know that JFK is dead there? I mean, there's all these conspiracy theories about JFK. Is he dead? What do you think, Jonathan? I think he might be living in a hole like Saddam Hussein was. <laughs> when they found him in that hole, there were people in Stoke saying, Blimey, wish I lived there. Look at that. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, one, day, <laughs> one day. I wish I lived there. He was lying on a bed of $750,000. <laughs> yeah. Ferguson, JFK. Right. Bosnich, Samurai. Right. And Ben K, Lawn Money. I'll give you three points. Well done. Oh, well. <laughs> Thank you.
In fact, Sir Alex Ferguson has a prodigious collection of JFK death-related tat. <laughs> ben Kay is known as the lawnmower man on account of his passion for cutting grass, and former Premiership goalkeeper Mark Bosnich collects samurai swords. In fact, he's about to star in his own martial arts film, Enter the Priory. <laughs> Alex Ferguson owns the actual autopsy report into Kennedy's death. It's not clear why he wants it, but he did recently produce documents proving that Paul Scholes was unavailable for England as he'd had his brains blown away whilst driving through Dallas. <laughs> Phil's team, your subject for the treble is Unfortunate Comparisons, and your trio are... Real Madrid, number 23, and second greatest living Englishman, David Beckham. The man who followed in Phil Tufnell's erratic footsteps, Ashley Giles. And Germany. <laughs> But Phil's team, which one was compared to a wheelie bin, who was likened to a kiwi fruit, and which of the three was compared to a halibut? Hey, before we start on this, you've been noticing I've kept my figure, Barry. Yes. I owe it all to you. Oh. Many years ago, Barry launched the Boxercise Diet Plan. Do you remember that? The exercise right. plan, Boxercise. Mm -hmm. You keep fit by working out. It's good boxing, though. It's hard work. Yeah. You've got you to get behind it. Oh, I can don't fancy you, you throw your whole work. body into it. Can you punch? Yeah, man, I can punch. Shall we? Get up for someone. Come yeah. on, oh, let's see it! I, um, I can't be responsible for what might happen. These hands have had to be registered with the local police as weapons. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what, hit me here. Hit me here. Hard as you want. No, forget Come it. Come on! You're an old man, I want you to... I'm telling you, it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> yeah, seriously, quite hard. Well, try one first to, to right. measure up. A medium-sized one? Yeah. Uh, no. Whoa, wow. what's that? <laughs> <laughs> My finger. Yeah. I, I hurt my finger then, because it wasn't tucked under. <laughs> Let's get on with it. It wasn't tucked under enough. Come on. Oh. Really hard. Right. Really hard? Really hard. Oh. What's in there? What's in there? Well, that what's was in there? Does it... Would it, make any, would it make any difference if he, if he had his keys in there? <laughs> so, which one's been compared to a wheelie bin, a kiwi fruit, yeah, and a halibut? And a halibut. A wheelie. Kiwi fruit. Wasn't that the name that Michael Bayamore adopted when he moved to New Zealand? <laughs> <laughs> I know that the Beckham household have been in dispute with their local bin men because she bought a single out just before Christmas, and imagine the extra work that provides for them. <laughs> <laughs> imagine Post Spice's rubbish. Well, we don't have to imagine, I suppose, really, do we? <laughs> I know David did have a run-in with the bin men in Spain when he got back after Christmas. Because they saw him and they were, you know, going to collect from him. They went, David, mis Beckham. This is Spanish. <laughs> Hola. Where your bin? He said, I've been home for Christmas to England. He went, no, no. <coughs> no, David. Where your dust bin? Yeah, I dust bin home to Britain. But, oh, no, no. <laughs> Where you really been? Oh, really? I've been home. <laughs> he was there for hours. <laughs> He was there for hours. Compare <laughs> uh, the Germans with the, with the fish because they're cold, wet, and nobody really likes them. Yeah. <laughs> the wheelie bin is Ashley Giles, the, uh, the uh, cricket tar. Not so much a wheelie bin for you, it's like a bed on wheels, isn't it, Phil? <laughs> it's, I, that's a beautiful place, like the spider hole, mate. Beautiful. <laughs> Beckham's hair was done like the kiwi fruit. So that would make, if I may finish off for the gentleman here, <laughs> Germany being like the unattractive fish that is the halibut, Nick. I'll give you three points for that. They're not all for the right reasons, but they're the right answers. <laughs> In fact, Ronaldo claimed David Beckham was a kiwi fruit for wearing his wife's underwear. He is hairy on the outside, but soft and fruity on the inside, he said. Cricket commentator Henry Blofeld likened Ashley Giles to a wheelie bin due to his lack of mobility on the pitch, and a Faroe Island newspaper compared the German football team to a halibut after almost holding them to a draw. We caught the largest halibut in European soccer waters and were about to haul it overboard when it got away. For years, Germany have been our bitter rivals, but as we move into the 21st century, it's high time we moved on and stopped singing all those silly songs. 
And anyway, now it's two World Wars and two World Cups. <laughs> Hilariously, and this is absolutely true, when Warwickshire ordered some mugs with the slogan, Ashley Giles, King of Spin, they came back inscribed, Ashley Giles, King of Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Similarly, Jeff Boycott's mugs came back describing him as the Count of Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <clears throat> at the end of that round, Phil's team have eight points and David's team have nine. It's time for the regulars to slip on the black blindfolds as we play Feel the Sportsman. David and Rory, you're up first this week. If you'd like to take your positions, you will have a suitable amount of time to work out who it is that's come near or between you. Come on then, Jonathan. That's hard, hard as you can. All right, here we go. Then. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Come on. You're like, it's like a, he swallowed a whole pig over Christmas. It's like a, I can feel his little tail down here as well. Go on. You don't go want on, me to punch you. Yeah, I'll do you. <laughs> I'm going to do it back, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> Blindfold's on. <laughs> and can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> it's better than Jonathan. It's better than everyone in the big pot now, don't you? <laughs> OK, and your time starts now. <laughs> oh, what was Jesus! That? <laughs> Don't you hit my hands with that. <laughs> ah. Hello? Hello? <laughs> oh, it's here. I've, I've found a lady, I think. <laughs> right. <laughs> OK. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> There's more of them. Gee, this is fantastic. <laughs> Santa got the letter after all. <laughs> oh, this is magic. Oh, dear, I'm as happy as Sandy Toxfigner. <laughs> hey, there's some wars here. <laughs> Don't clap him! Oh, I'm in it? the water! Oh, <laughs> Do you want to try oh. guessing at any stage? Oh. <laughs> it's uh, one of those, um, Away one of those dragon boat things, isn't it? Yeah, I'll give you that, the Great British <laughs> Premier Ladies Dragon Boat Team. <laughs> As you would have noticed, I've had my hair cut and I've joined the world of the man again. Right. I no longer have the long hair of a lady. No. One amongst us still has the long hair of a lady. <laughs> and yet, we've never seen that long hair unfurled in its most ladylike <laughs> no, <true>. manner. <laughs> and last year, last year before Christmas, you promised me, you said next year you'd, you'd get it out, so to speak, for me. <laughs> no, not that. We've all seen that and it's not very impressive. <laughs> Let's have a look at your hair. Here we go, a big moment. Oh, yeah! Oh, my look at that! <laughs> my God. You are right to tie it up. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Thomas is suddenly interested. <laughs> Phil and Jonathan, if you'd like to take your positions, please. You have a similar amount of time to work out who is between you two. Blindfold's on. Can we have on, our on. second mystery guest, please? <laughs> OK, and your time starts now. That cheer was... It's yeah. either probably Johnny Wilkinson or someone's finally murdered Poshmite. <laughs> <laughs> is it a person? What? Oh, it is. speaking, Phil, oh, yeah. there it is. Has well, Mike Gatton been run over? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Hold on. I recognise... I recognise this breast anyway. It's Trini Woodall. <laughs> oh, what the hell is that? Oh, yes. Hey, I know what it might be. We might be in luck. There might be a golf sale nearby. <laughs> 
It's a bloke holding a sign, isn't it? Oh, no, it is, is the end of Australian rugby nigh. Yeah, yeah. on, here is it. David Campese. It is indeed David Campese. Yes, I should, uh, yes, I should point out that Jonathan actually took his blindfold off before Phil said it was David Campese, but it didn't matter because he still didn't know who it was. <laughs> <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, Phil's team have 11 points and David's team have 12. We finish as ever with the name game, the team in the league goes first, which is David's team. So, David, can you pass those along to Rory or Thomas? Merci beaucoup. Vous êtes très gentil. Your time starts maintenant. Place of Manchester United. Think American bottom. Bon, Mr. Bon. Very good. American uh, bon. Um, <laughs> what, what you do with biscuits when you put them into tea? Dunk. Dunking. Dunkin. Dunking. Dunking. Uh, uh, boxing, boxing promoter. Dunking. Dunking. That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> this is a rugby player whose whose surname suggests he might be in the Angli Anglican ministry. <laughs> Pass. Like a priest, priesty, <laughs> common common curé. Um, you know, like a priest. I'll go and say oh, more tea. Vicar, yeah. Vic and like a vicar is vicary. Vicary. Vic uh, fear vicary. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and talking of vicars, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is your deputy at Man City. He's crap, but then you know. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Weaver. No, the other one. The Ele one who plays. Kevin Ellegar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a French rugby player. Um, <laughs> think of blue suits are made of... Silk? No. Um, think of what you put on a horse is a... Saddle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you put money on a horse, if you put money on a horse, it's a bet. 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 If you put two of them there, what's the plural of bet? Bets. So I've got... Bets how many bets? Bets. 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 Seven will win for you. He's got 17, you've got 11. Seven will do it. We you can do this. Oh. Pass this on to Jonathan, please. Mr. McGuigan, thank you all. Right then. Your time, down. Jonathan, nice starts time. now. Okay, uh, rugby player, English. Like Second Jonathan. name is the same nickname you used to have. Cat. First name is, remember, Ask Aspen. My cat. My cat. Okay. Uh, this is a boxer, but he's more famous for his excellent grilling machines these days. Josh Foreman. Harley, yeah, there you go. <laughs> They're bloody good, I tell you. They do a big <laughs> one as well. <laughs> different <laughs> All right, racing driver, Irish bloke, like the lady, is in trouble it? with yes. the law. There you go. Uh, lady, a bit of a pipe smoker, I believe. Um, <laughs> if you lost your hair, you would be... Spamming. Bald. No, not bald, <laughs> yeah. uh, but in the, during the post of your you are... Going. Shivering. Spam. You are... You are balding. 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 Yeah, clever balding. Yeah, OK. This is... Uh, oh, he's a cricketer. If you went to a place where trees grew and found gold, that would be a... Forest. Gold yeah. forest. Gold something. Gold... Yeah. Cricketer? Gold. Where do trees grow? In a In forest. Yeah, no, but gone. what's it called when you have a lot of them together? Forest. Uh, if you go down wood, to the... Woods. OK, woods. so it'd be a gold wood. But if it wasn't gold, it was a lesser metal. It would be a... Silverwood. Silverwood. Oh, there wood. you go. All right. <laughs> All right, um, in Ireland, you find peat in these places. Yeah, bog. Bogs. Oh, and uh, the first name will be the same as your first name? Phil. He's a driver. OK. Phil Bog. Bog. This one, first name, is a player, football player. First name is your boot. What yeah. sort of boot do you wear when it's raining? Wellington. Wellington. Second name, um, ooh, hold on. Um, ooh, ooh, hold on. Uh, say sandwiches very quickly. Sandwiches. There you go. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't know it. So David's team have 17, but this week's winner is oh. first team with 18. Fair enough. Some sandwiches is a good one. So thanks to David Rawley and Thomas, <laughs> Phil, Jonathan, and Barry. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Funniest TV ads from around the world. It's Jim Davidson's commercial breakdown after the news here on BBC One. And tomorrow night, Jonathan Ross is back hosting the search for Britain's best sitcom on BBC Two at nine. <laughs>